أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال نوح الرب إنهم عصوني واتبعوا من لم يزده ماله وولده إلا خسارا ومكروا مكرا كبارا وقالوا لا تذرن آلهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوق ونسرا وقد أضلوا كثيرا ولا تزد الظالمين إلا ضلالا مما خطيئاتهم أغرقوا فأدخلوا نارا فلم يجدوا لهم من دون الله أنصارا وقال نوح الرب لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارا إنك إن تذرهم يضل عبادك ولا يلد إلا فاجرا كفارا رب اغفر لي ولوالدي ولمن دخل بيتي مؤمنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات ولا تزد الظالمين إلا تبارا صدق الله العظيم Continuing the ayahs of Surah Nuh and today we are starting from ayah number 21 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned a dua of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam a very important dua in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have explained the importance of accepting the message from Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. And number two, the result of rejecting the messages of the Prophets of Allah. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam tried his best to convey the message of deen. And he continued talking to people as Quran says, Al-Fasanatin illa khamsina ama for 950 years. And as he himself explains, and the ayahs are revealed in Surah Nuh, Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Ya Allah, I have been inviting them to this deen day and night. And he also says, that I invited them secretly, openly, in public, in private, every way of inviting them to the deen of Allah, I have used it, and any mean that I thought will be helpful in bringing them towards the message, towards accepting the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have tried it. But ya Allah, innahum asawni. They always disobeyed me. And now, Ya Allah, I think that it's enough for me. I cannot do any better. I cannot do it anymore. And there is limit for everything. I have reached my limits now. Trying my best with these people. قَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ إِنَّهُمْ عَصَوْنِي Nuh salam said, Ya Allah, these people have disobeyed me. And the reason they are disobeying me is not that they are not able to understand my message or it was my shortcomings. The main reason is They are following those whose wealth and children have not got him anything except Laws, which means these people are following the people who are totally in laws, and what tabaru malam yazid, they followed those whose wealth and children have only added to them more and more laws, and because of having wealth and children, they were arrogant. Wealth and children are great blessings of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in this life. And after having blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you expect that people should be more grateful 
and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is saying, Ya Allah, instead of being grateful to you, they are being disgrateful for the same reason. Just because you have blessed them. Now if you take these things away, it still is not going to help them. So Ya Allah, there is no way that these people want to come back to the deen of Allah. And the poor people of the community are following these wealthy people. And this is a fact. If we were sitting in a group of people that is totally new and people who never attend the masajid, who have no understanding of deen, might be a little difficult to talk to them straightforward as Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is being mentioning in these ayahs. But of course with this type of gathering that we are sitting in, we have to say things that will be applicable to our lives and we can, where we can judge ourselves and make sure that we are not doing something wrong. And if we look at this ayah and then try to apply to ourselves and see how many times we are very respectful to some people only because of their wealth. And other people are neglected just because they don't have that privilege. They don't have that wealth. How many times a person is respected just because the type of car he drives? How many times a person is respected just because we know his position or his status in the community or we know how wealthy he is? Of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ كَرِيمُ قَوْمٍ فَأَكْرِمُوا When an honorable person of any, any community comes to you, you should honor the person. Because he is honorable in his community, so you should honor that person. But does not mean that dishonor the other type of people. And at the same time, it does not mean that when you honor these people, honor them just because they have more wealth. No, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that a person from another community comes to us and we know that he is the president of that society, he is an honorable person in his community, in his family, so let's respect him. But trying to do extra things beyond our limits and disobeying the sharia of Islam just because we want to respect that person is not allowed. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is complaining, Ya Allah, they are following those wealthy people and disobeying me because they have to follow them. These wealthy people are asking them to stay away from me and of course they are listening to them. It normally happens when people have love for something, then wherever they see it, they get attracted to it. And we have so much wealth and love for the wealth that when we see love somewhere, we get attracted to that wealth. And when we find out that there is a person who has a lot of it, we feel like we want to respect him, pay, him, pay a lot of respect, although we know he's not going to give us a single dime from what he has. But just because he has it, we'll pay extra respect to that person. Just like the people of knowledge like to respect those who they know that they have a lot of knowledge. The reason they want to respect them is because they love the knowledge. So they know that the knowledge is there, so they will respect those people. The people of Iman will respect those who they think they have a lot of Iman, a strong Iman. And therefore, when they see people with a strong Iman, they will try to go and be with those people and pay a lot of respect to those people, because that's a sign of loving the Iman. So whenever we find that there is something we love and we like, and it's somewhere, we not only try to get that thing, we even respect the people who have that thing. This is very natural. So same thing, people who only have the love of the worldly gain, when they see people with that wealth, 
They just run after them and try to obey them even in wrongful things. This was the complaint of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَمَكَرُوا مَكْرًا كُبَّارًا And they have plotted a tremendous plot. Which says, Ya Allah, they made every plan to hurt me. Any rumor against me, anything that will put me down, that will make me look bad in the eyes of people, they tried their best to do it. And this is always the sign of the falsehood. Always the sign of battle. Whenever battle comes, battle has no power to confront the truth. So what it does is, tries to run away from the truth and then keep on spreading rumors against the truth. وَمَكَرُوا مَكْرًا kubara. Ya Allah, kubar, what does the word kubar means? Kubar is the extreme exaggeration of kabir. Kabir means big. Kubar is the largest, biggest. Makaru makran kubara. They did the worst plot, the largest plot and plans they could make, they made it against me. Which means they did their best to hurt me. They did their best to humiliate me and to make people turn away from me. Fir'aun, when he was approached by Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and he, after talking to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he realized that he cannot stand before the truth. He cannot challenge this truth. So he said to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, I will talk to you later. And I will bring some magicians who will challenge you. And they fix a date for that. But on the other hand now, within that time he did not stay quiet. Quran says that Pharaoh went around. ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ يَسْعَى What did he do? He turned away from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam because he cannot stand the truth. He cannot compete with the truth. So Adbar, he turned away. Now what? Yasa, he's running all around. Don't talk to Musa. Don't talk to Musa alayhi salam. He's bad. He's a magician. Don't even get close to Musa alayhi salam. And now he's trying to spread rumors against Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. This is always the way of the falsehood. When you see a person who's trying to whisper to every person and trying to keep talk to other people, you know, that person is like this. And many times you would ask that person, why don't you talk to him directly and just finish the, talk, finish the subject? He says, no, no reason of talking to him. When there is no reason of talking to him, so what's the reason of talking behind his back? It's only the falsehood is not has not, does not have the power to take the truth and to confront the truth. Therefore, he doesn't want to talk to the person on his face. All he will do is turn around and keep on talking to people about it. وَمَكَرُوا مَكْرًا كُبَّارًا وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ آلِهَتَكُمْ Musa a.s. continues, uh, Sayyidina Nuh, uh, Nuh a.s. continues to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Ya Allah, when I, inv I invited them, they went around telling each other, La tadarunna alihatakum. Don't leave your loads. Make sure that because of Sayyidina Nuh salam, because of Nuh, you don't stop worshipping your loads. These are very important to us. We should hold to these loads. La tadarunna alihatakum. And now specifically they are mentioning the names. Do not leave. Wad, Suwa, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that all of these people were virtuous people in the, amongst the people of Sayyidina, of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. And of course, much before the time of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. These were virtuous people in the community. When these people died, Shaitan went to the people in the form of a human being and he said to them 
These were very virtuous people. You don't have people like them anymore. Why don't you make a picture of these people, at least just to preserve the memory of those people, and you will know how they looked like, their grandchildren will remember them, and you will get a blessing of having at least remembering those virtuous people. So they thought it's a good idea. Let's make the pictures. And at that time, making, making pictures was not haram in those religions. So they made the picture of those people. Centuries after that, shaitan went to them again in the form of a human being. And as I said, in the form of a human being, it reminds me that we might think this was something happening in the previous nations. That shaitan used to come to people in the form of a human being and talk to them. And they won't realize that this is shaitan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in another hadith that these are not all the stories. It still continues in this ummah also. And many times, something for us to remember, many times shaitan comes to us, sits with us in our gatherings in a form of a human being. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sometime people sit together and they are discussing something in their gatherings. They see a stranger sitting with them. That a stranger say, shares some information with these people. You say, yeah, I heard this in the news. Someone was saying this, that a stranger shares some information that he have heard. And then the gathering is over. The meeting is over. And people go back and say, instead of spreading the words that they have heard from that stranger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a stranger was shaitan and shaitan sometimes comes in the form of a human being and he just comes and throws some words, some false information and people just take those words and start spreading it on behalf of the shaitan. And that is the reason Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith Kafa bil mar'i kathiban an yuhadditha bi kulli ma sami' It's enough for a person to be a liar that he would narrate everything that he hears. Whatever he hears that someone said it. No, we have to confirm the news. After confirming it, now go ahead and say it. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu O you who believe when a fasiq, a wrongdoer and before I continue, let me ask you this question. Who is worst? Kafir or Fasiq? Kafir and Mushrik is the worst. Fasiq is a sinner. Kafir is the state beyond Fisq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. Allah will not forgive the shirk. Other than shirk, he will forgive anything else. So he can forgive the fisk, but he will never forgive the kufr and, and, and shirk. So kufr and shirk is a stage beyond fisk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran calls some believers also fasiq. Just like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when a person blames his wife billah, or a Muslim woman for a sin that they have not committed, that person is fasiq, that person's witness will not be accepted in Islam anymore. If that person will give a witness against any person or witness that he has seen the moon, he has sighted the moon, that person's witness will not be accepted in Islam anymore. Because he have blamed an innocent person for doing something that they have not done. That is fisq. And the shahada, the witness of a fasiq is not accepted in Islam. The imama of fasiq is makruh in Islam. A fasiq should not become imam. He should not be chosen to lead the salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah tells us, in ja'akum fasiqun binaba. If a fasiq will come to you with the news, you are not allowed to convey to someone else. Fatabayyanu, confirm the news. If a fasiq comes to you with the news, confirm the news. Because, bi jahala. 
you might say something against some people unknowingly just because of hearing it from that fasiq and then you will be also doing something wrong. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you get a news, make sure that the news is not from a fasiq. And if it is from a fasiq, you have to confirm it. And nowadays, day and night, the news we are getting is from a kafir and a mushrik. A stack beyond fasiq. So how much we have to make sure that we confirm the news and unfortunately many times we make up our mind against our own brothers and sisters after getting a news from not only fasiq, from kafir and a mushrik. So I was mentioning that Rasul, uh, these people were virtuous people in their communities. And shaitan went to them. In fact, I was mentioning about shaitan going to a gathering and sometime he goes in the form of a human being and he sits with them and he, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in this nation this happens. That shaitan comes to us in the form of a human being and then he just shares some information with us and we stand conveying that message is not allowed for us to do that. We have to make sure who the person is. Where did he get his message, his news from? And if we don't know the person, and we don't know that he's a virtuous person and he doesn't normally he doesn't lie, then we are not allowed to just accept the news and can wait further down. So these people, what Sua, Yahus, Yahuq, Nasr, these were virtuous people in their communities. And shaitan asked the people to make the pictures of them. After centuries he said to them, instead of just pictures, why don't you make an idol of these people? Because pictures might be erased or they might uh, change. But if you make an idol like the looking of these people, then it will never be forgotten. And you will have it forever. They thought this is a better idea. And they made it. Initially when they made those idols, the intention was not to worship these idols. It's only preserving the memories, keeping the memories of the virtuous people. Now, after some time, centuries passed. And now people started gradually going to these idols and started asking favors from them. And as this continued, other people, another generations came, they said, you know, we saw our parents asking these idols for favors. These should be our lords. And they started worshipping them and giving them the full ibadah, full worship of these idols. There is a rule in our sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that rule in Surah Baqarah. That rule is called Saddu Zara'i. Saddu Zara'i means whatever leads to an evil is stopping that thing from the very beginning before it becomes evil. It's stopping it before it becomes evil. There were some people <coughs> who used to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yahud, they would come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say, Ra'ina. Ra'ina in Arabic word language means, take care of us. Pay attention to our needs. But at the same time, in Hebrew it was a curse. So Jews used to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we say, Ra'ina. And now by saying Ra'ina, they don't mean that take care of us or pay attention to us. In fact, they used to go out and make fun of it that see we went and cursed him on his face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some ayahs in Quran saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la taqulu Ra'ina. All you who believe, do not say Ra'ina anymore. What is Ra'ina? It's a word of an Arabic language which has a good meaning, nothing haram in it. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to close that door that will lead people to evil. So he said, no more ra'ina in, in, in Arabic language. Instead of ra'ina, use a replacement word, which is unzurna. Same meaning. This is called saddu zaraya. In Islam, Islam is the most careful religion in saddu zaraya, which means stopping the evil before it starts. And therefore, in our deen, Bowing down for others is not allowed, whereas we find in the previous religions it was allowed. And Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam and his children, they went and they did sigda for Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Wa rafa'a abawayhi ala al-arsh wa kharru lahu sujjada. But in our Islam is not allowed. The reason is saddu zara'i'a. As a respect, nothing wrong with it, but that respect will lead to ibadah then. Therefore, Islam put a full stop there that that thing by itself is haram now in Islam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained that since idol worshipping, the worst sin in the world, which is shirk as I said, that is the worst sin. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah will not forgive the shirk, will forgive anything else. That worse than started from what? From pictures. The first step to that shirk was pictures. Then idols. And then they started worshipping these idols. Therefore Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put a full stop there. And he said even the pictures are not allowed in this deen. This is called saddu zaraya. So these were virtuous people. They started worshipping them, as I said. And now they are telling each other, La tazarunna alihatakum, these are your lords. And whatever Nuh alayhi salatu was salam is telling you, you shouldn't pay any attention to him. Don't think of and don't even worry about what he has to say. These are our lords. How do we prove that these are our lords? Because our forefathers were worshipping them. That's the only proof they have because our forefathers were worshipping them. وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fact, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam says, وَقَدْ أَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا They have misguided many people. And now he makes dua, وَلَا تَزِدِ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا ضَلَالًا And grant no increase to the wrongdoers except in error. Which means now, Ya Allah, since these are wrongdoers, they don't want to come to Deen al-Haq. Now, if you want to give them any increase in anything, it should be only in going away from you. Don't bring them back. Now, this is the reason he's making this dua. Because now, this is after 950 years, he's making this dua. It's time for him now. And he sees that now, there is no hope for him that these people will listen to him anymore. Some people might think, why did he make that dua? Why still he did not make the dua that Ya Allah still guide them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the reason for it. Before understanding the next ayahs which are telling us the reason, I have to pause to explain few things to understand, have a better understanding of the next ayahs. The dua of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam continues till the end of the surah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put a little pause over here after this ayah. After ayah number 24, there is a pause there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something of himself, breaks the dua of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. All the dua continued. But Allah now he stops that dua, stops narrating the dua of Nuh alayhi salam, tells us something in between the ayahs, and then continues the rest of the dua. What is it that he tells us? The thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the next ayahs is that Nuh alayhi salam
The thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the next ayahs is that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam made the dua just at a right time. He made the dua at the right time. Mimma khati atihim ugriku fa udhilu nara. Because of their sins, they were drawn and then they were put into the hellfire. Allah says, not because of his dua, because of their wrongdoings. I knew that this is it now. Allah is telling us, I knew that now is a time to destroy the nation. That was the exact time that Nuh is making that dua. Which is telling us, Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, because they are in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do everything at the right time. And Nuh alayhi salam knew, why didn't he make the dua after 700 years? It's a still long period of time. He didn't make it after 900 years. He made it exactly 950 years. That was the time he knew that now the punishment is about to come. So as the punishment is about to come, Ya Allah, I can see from the signs now, by dealing with these people and by talking to you, I can see, Ya Allah, is a time for this nation to be punished. And you are about to punish them. So Ya Allah, I also make the dua. Ya Allah, I also make the dua that destroy this nation. So in other words, we can tell from this how close relationship Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when things are about to happen, they can figure it out that this is about to happen now. Just like in the relationship of father and children, parents and children, and even more important, husband and wife. Many times, the other person is, figures out before something happens that now this, will, this is what will happen. Many times we walk home with some flowers or some gifts, because you know, you are expecting something different that day. And you know the mood by talking to her on the phone, you know that you will be getting something difficult today. So here you walk with some gifts to call her, cool her down. So you are prepared for it, you know what will happen. So by talking to each other, you figure out this is now what you expect from the other person. is about, about a time for you to spend the night hungry today. When Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, they talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they couldn't tell, okay, this is almost the time now, he's going to punish the nation. So he's also making the dua. You know, Allah can figure it out. This is the time now, punish them. Which means, telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm also looking for the same thing that you're looking for. فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِنْ أُغْرِقُوا so Allah says, before of their sin, because of their sins, they were droned and udkhilu nara, then they were put into the fire. Which means, in the, after their death, they were put into the fire. فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنصَارًا And they had no helper but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because they rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so He did not help them at that time. In fact, He is the one who punished them. After mentioning that point, so that no one will object to Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, and will object to Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam making dua against those nations. So now Allah continues the dua of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَقَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam continues, say, Ya Allah, لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارا. Do not leave a single home of the disbelievers in this world. Do not leave a single house and single family of disbelievers in this world, because إنك إن تذرهم يضل عبادك. If you leave them, they will mislead your slaves. يضل عبادك. They will be misleading other people. They don't want to listen anymore. That's it, Ya Allah. They don't want to obey you anymore. And وَلَا يَلِدُوا إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا they will, they will only breed the 
immoral disbelievers. They will have even their children, their future generations will all be just disbelievers and kuffar, fujar, which means sinners uh, and immoral people just like they are. So Allah, they have decided to keep away from you and turn away from you. So this is my dua against these people. And now Nuh والسلام, changes the tune of the dua and he says, Rabbi Firli. Ya Allah, forgive me. Wali wali dayya. Forgive my parents. Wali man dakhala baytiya mu'mina. Forgive every person who will enter my home in the state of Iman. Wali mu'minina wal mu'minat. Forgive all mu'min men and mu'min women. Wala tazidi zalimina illa tabara. But coming back to the same dua. Do not increase the wrongdoers ex in anything except in destruction. So against, again making dua against those kuffar. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. He knows it's a time for the kuffar to be destroyed. And he's making that dua. As he makes this dua, in between that dua, and he knows that this dua is getting accepted. And this is a very important point there. As he knows the dua is getting accepted and Allah is going to do it, he adds few more things that he wants also. Something that he added in the middle of that dua that he was making about his nation. And this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have instructed us in the hadith by telling us that when a person sends blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that that is accepted. A person would say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Do you think Allah will say, no, I'm not going to send blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's always accepted. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when you start your dua, start it with this. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. By sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then keep on asking for whatever you need. And your dua again with sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah once he will accept the beginning and the end, he's not going to reject what's in between that. Then he's going to take the whole package and accept even your dua, that things that you need. Because he's not going to say, okay, I'll take the beginning of it, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, accept that, and take the end of it, wa sallallahu ala Muhammad, and accept that, and reject whatever comes in between. He's not going to do that. He will just accept the whole thing. So as he will accept the whole thing, even our dua will be accepted. This is what Nuh alayhi salatu was salam did here. He knows it's a time for the destruction of that nation. So he's making dua against those people. He knows the dua is being accepted. So now he makes dua for himself and then again adds the same thing. Wala tazid zalimina illa tabara. Ya Allah, again I'm saying destroy these zalimin. So he knows that this is accepted. Before that, he also said, destroy the Zalimin. That is also accepted. So in between that, Rabbi Firli Wali Wali Daya is not going to be rejected. This is the same thing that Sayyidina Nuh is using. So, dua by itself is a very important tool for a Muslim. I was talking to the brother today. I asked him what was his field and he said, communication. At that time, my mind was just running into the same field that we have the best technology of communication talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no better technology of communication that will make us, give us the ability of communicate with anyone in the world better than this ability that we have of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is called dua. Dua is the best mean of communication. It's the best technology that Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us. That we connect ourselves through this in seconds. You are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the Lord of the whole universe. And now, you don't need these physical webs. His web is spread throughout, even beyond our sight and beyond our thinking and our mind. And therefore, as you are connected there, you are connected to everywhere in the world. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this example just came to my mind, I will mention it and end with this inshallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he started spreading the message of Islam, he used that technology of communication. He knew that there is no other way of conveying or spreading my words to the people. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he built the Kaaba, he used the same technology. He knew that I have to convey the message to all the people that now the Kaaba is there, so come for tawab, but how can he do it? So he says, Ya Allah, I'll make the dua, I'll say the words, and you convey the message. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi sallam called, and all the souls who are not still in the world, all the souls heard the call of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, and whoever said labbaik as many times as they said labbaik, they will be making those many hajj. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the same communication, same technology, that making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I cannot spread the word, how can I do it? There is no way for me. So what to do now? We find the hadith that people are sitting in their gatherings and they hear someone saying that go to Makkah Mukarramah because the Prophet have come out. Who are you? He says, I'm a jinn. A person came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to become Muslim. Who told him about Islam? He says, I was in the jungle. I saw the animals talking about you. So that's the web. That's the proper mean of communication. This dua is the strongest mean of communication we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with. And we all have it. No one is missing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed all of us with that. So that is the way. This is what Sayyidina Nuh did. That 950 years, okay. He's accepting everything from the nation now. As he feels that now this is enough. Right away. He calls there. That Ya Allah. This is what I want to happen now, and this is the time for me that said I cannot do it anymore. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes, oh, takes care of that problem for Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. So dua is the best weapon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with. And that is the reason Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, dua ibadah. Dua is the brain of all the ibadah. Having every ibadah. And not having the dua after the ibadah is just like having the body without any brain. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man lam alayhi. When a person does not make dua to Allah, does not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gets angry with the person. We get angry when people ask us. Oh, he's always after me. He always keeps on asking. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry when we don't ask him. That's Kareem, that's Rahim. That's the one who likes to give. So therefore, we should have a habit of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. And we need to use this mean of communication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with. If a phone in our home will not work for a day or less than a day, we will be totally disturbed that I'm totally disconnected from the world and I have no we mean of communication. I'm not able to talk. You'll fall the, fall the, uh, try to get hold of the phone companies and tell them anything that you can remember. Every bad word you have in your memory, will you just get it out? That, you know, I have been in, out of touch with people for such a long time. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with that best mean of communication, dua. And how many times do we use it? We have to ask ourselves, why are we neglecting that? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات.